The alarm went off that morning, just like it always did. But something was different that day. It was that one day a year when we all live in fear. Everyone but Pete. Good morning. Beautiful day. I made breakfast. Sugar for your coffee, Dad? Oh, no, you don't. Uh, you think I'm going to fall for the old switcheroo, huh? Well, maybe I'll have a, a little Crab Jacks cleaner in my coffee, huh? Maybe that's where the sugar is. Or uh, maybe that's what you want me to think. <laughs> yeah, you, you think you're so clever. Well, you know, you got to wake up pretty early in the morning to put one over on old Don. <laughs> April Fool's Day, the day my brother Pete rules the universe. His pranks are legendary, like the time he freeze-dried Cuba, but the prank he planned this year would top them all. Solid day, solid as a rock. Can you feel it? The electricity. So, everyone's dying to know, what's the big plan? What plan, Wayne? What plan? Is this guy super genius or what? Wayne, there is nothing to tell. And even if there was, we wouldn't tell you. I don't believe you two. Aren't you guys getting a little old for April Fools? I guess not. April Fools. Genius at work. Just tell me, is anything gonna happen to me? No guarantees, Wayne. Except one. We're not pranking each other, right? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the enemy. Notice the abundance of freckles, the innocent smile. Don't let it fool you. He's a killer. Meet Principal Ken Schwinger, the most despised principal in Wellsville history. It wasn't the mandatory squat thrusts or the creamed corn lunches that made him so hated. It was eight V-necked dweebs called the Up With Personal Hygiene Singers. Every year, Schwinger inflicted their good hygiene jamboree on the helpless kids of Wellsville. You see, when I was a boy, I had a problem with Clogged ears. Then one day at school, a little fella named Johnny Earwax sang a song that opened my ears to a whole new world. Uh, that's very touching, sir, but... Ah, uh... Uh, don't you get it? The hygiene singers are coming today. April Fool's Day? I know how Wrigley thinks. He'll try something. Uh, aren't you being a little paranoid? <laughs> Paranoid? Come on! We're buds! Amigos! Just tell me, who are you gonna prank? That's privileged information, Wayne! Why? Is it someone big? Is it... Schwinger? That's it! You're going after the man! You gotta be crazy! Relax! Schwinglitz isn't so tough! You don't think so, my friend. Look, 
We've put up with him and his stinking show for too long. Today, they're both going down. Bring it on, punk. I'll shred you like wheat. Say enough. Bottom line, if Wrigley's gonna be stopped, I'm gonna need a pro. Miss Flappinger, send him in. Pitch stain? Some people call me that. Then again, some people don't have any compassion for glandular disorders. My associates, hairnet, night brace. You're hiring these troublemakers? That's a necessary evil. Uh, no offense. Are you up to it, young man? Nailing Pete Wrigley is the best part of being alive. I'm deputizing you as hall monitor. She'll have total access to the school. Find out what he's up to and bring him in. How do you want him? Dead or alive? <laughs> He's good. Oh, he's good. <laughs> the battle lines were drawn. By lunchtime, the hygiene assembly was only an hour away, and Pitstain didn't have Diddley on Pete. All that was about to change. Cream corn, not again. It's so slimy. For your information, Mr. Schwinger says the cream corn builds strong body 17 ways. Monica, what are you doing? I'm going for my Cafeteria Lady Merit Badge. Don't mess it up. Now, may I interest you in a heaping helping of nature's goodness? I'd rather eat tar. Jeez Louise, what's with Monica? I guess we better not tell her about the big prank. Shh! Wayne, this place is crawling spies. What are you two Dumots? Back there. Uh, we won a contest. A contest. Good answer. You dim watts. Uh, back to work. <laughs> Nothing like a good meal right before a good prank. I always say. Right, guys? Oops. This tuna surprise is amazing. What's the surprise? Hmm. I'm not sure. It's on the tip of my tongue. Let me try. My taste buds are like a flavor computer. Bingo! It's Crepster Atomic Hot Sauce. Hey! You're right! No. You promised? April Fools. Stain to Schwinger, stain to Schwinger. The dam is ready to break. It uh, cools your mouth like a flowing mountain stream. See, I'm not such a bad guy. I know people think I'm some kind of monster, but I'd never do to you what Pete just did. <laughs> I thought he was your friend. Me too, but holy moly. Did you see everybody laughing? It was horrible. 
I know your pain. I don't think so. Nona. People call me Pitstain. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't always that way. Long ago, before Wrigley cursed me with that nickname, people used my real name. They used to call me Flynn. Hi, Fran. If I were your friend, I'd never use you the way Wrigley is. What do you mean? Don't you see, Nona? He used you in that lunchroom just like he uses everybody. Just to get a laugh. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We've got to stop him before he hurts anyone else the way he hurt us. Now, what do you know about the prank he's planning? Only everything. Where should I begin? Sing, my little canary. Sing your little heart out. When it came to April Fool's Day, my brother always made sure the joke was on the other guy. But once Nona ratted him out to pit stain, this time, the joke was on Pete. This next piece, composed by Marquis Le Flan, was first performed in 1787 during the beheading of King Louis XIII. It's not you we want. It's him. What's the charge? Ah, oh, Mr. Wrigley. It is my pleasure to place you under immediate and extended suspension for plotting to disrupt a school function. You got nothing on me. I didn't. That's true. But then, a little birdie began to sing. It's all over, Pete. I told him everything. Why? You broke your word. You pranked me. And now I'm pranking you. Pretty good, huh? Oh, this is so good. No, no. You traitor! Ah! They were counting on us! Ah! This isn't happening. Somebody slapped me. You're not a traitor, young lady. You're a hero to your school, to your country, to good hygiene. Mint. Thanks, Fran. Please have a seat, Mr. Wrigley. Thank you, gentlemen. I can handle it from here. I guess I should wish April Fools back. <laughs> but somehow, I don't think you'd appreciate it. As much as I'd like to discuss your miserable fate, I'm late for assembly. You may not know this, but I'm a personal friend of Johnny Earwax. Johnny Earwax is a heiner! Johnny Earwax opened my ears to the sound of life, Mr. Wrigley, a sound you'll never hear. You think about that while you sit there. That's it? You're just gonna leave me here? That's right. And if you get up from that chair, you're in big trouble. Ooh, the principal's chair. I better not get out of the principal's chair. 
You really think a chair can stop me? Actually, I was counting on the secret trap door. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Wrigley. Attention, please. It gives me great pleasure to be standing here today because when you say up with hygiene, you might as well be saying up with life. And now, without further achoo, <laughs> I'd like to present the up with personal hygiene singers. Everybody, I'm Johnny Earwax, and we're the Up With Personal Hygiene Singers. <laughs> Here's an answer to your woes, hygiene, hygiene. When you're clean from head to toe, you will always say, I'm a happy girl, I'm a happy boy. People love you when you're clean, so now on with our show. Pardue to the rescue. There's an answer to your woes. Hygiene, hygiene. When you're clean from head to toe. Uh, Ms. Burnbauer, can I go? Absolutely not, Mr. Pardue. You'll have to wait until after the assembly. I can't. Dr. Kleinmarker says if I hold it too long, I'll cause an infection. He says an infection at my age could cause my corpuscles to Enough. get... Enough. You've got two minutes. Pardue has crossed enemy lines. The super genius, super spy, has done it again! Oh no! Pete Wrigley, I presume? Wayne? All right, let's do some recon. We seem to be in some sort of a caged area. Wayne, get down. Well, why? Time. No, no. What are you doing here? You're a traitor. You are awesome. Wait. You guys. Jeez Louise, this is super genius. It's all part of the big prank, right? Pete, he knows so much. We should kill him. We'll spare you, Waynoid. If you stay out of the way. When you roll on deodorant, deodorant, when you roll on deodorant, everyone the Mr. Pardue is still AWOL. You keep an eye out for him. I'm going backstage. And a Hall of Fame quarterback. He's Wayne Pardue, coming soon to a theater. Hmm? Who invited Wayne the Pain? It's a long story. Wait. Get this thing set up? Pete, I'm a crab scout. Let's hook up this sucker. Somebody gonna tell me what's going on? Red Fox is in the den. I repeat, Red Fox in den. Wrigley? Wrigley? That's impossible. I already caught him.
guys. Lamb it, Wayne! We're almost done! You got that right, stick fist. Now, drop the hose. Or I'll drop you. Ow! Ow! Red Fox is dead. Do you copy? Loud and clear. Just in time. Hey, everybody! It's me, Johnny Earwax, and I'd like you to meet my special friend, Mr. Ear. Say hello to Mr. Ear. Hello, Mr. Ear. Gee, I don't think Mr. Ear heard you. And do you know why? It's because he's full of wax. If only I had a cotton swab, I could clean Mr. Ear. Hey, do any of you have a cotton swab? I just happen to have one. Well, Wrigley, what do you say? I say, it's prank time. Fake Rooney of the century! What do you think you're doing? Pulling the best prank you ever saw, Miss Birdbrainer. Red alert! Red alert! Buster Rump, you guys, we only got a few seconds. I can hardly hear a sound. I walk across the street and cars are apt to blow me down. I cannot find my family. They are shouting all the town. My ears are filled with wax. Contact. Must get the wax. Must get the wax. Must get the wax. day, it's still known as the greatest prank Wellsville has ever seen. Some remember it as the last time they ever saw Johnny Earwax. You don't deserve that giant swamp! No! No! But those who were there remember something else. How the forces of good and evil joined sides that day. Will they ever join sides again? Maybe we'll find out next April Fool's Day. <laughs>